Hello and welcome back to Topher Drives. And if you can't already tell, I have a problem. Um, and it's right here. It's a 2000 Mercedes-Benz ML55 AMG that I just bought for $1,000. Now that may seem like the deal of a lifetime, um, but it's very broken. And I'm trying not to sound like Hoovy here, and Hoovy, if you're watching, which you're definitely not, um, it's silver, so it's different than yours. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I bought this ML55 for $1,000. Um, it runs and drives. It's actually quite clean. It's got minimal rust on it. And um, this is the first video in the series of me hopefully bringing this thing back to life. Now, I know what you could be thinking. Well, what about the W126, the 420 SEL that's full of bullet holes? Are you gonna fix that? Yes, I am, but I couldn't turn down this thing when it popped up for only $1,000. So now I have two broken Mercedeses, and um, well, I have to fix them both. And out of all the cars I have, two of them are broken, and well, they're both of my Mercedes. So, isn't she gorgeous? And switching over now to POV because the wind was blowing my tripod down. Plus, it's just easier to walk around cars when you're in POV. Plus, you can see my hands. Um, anyways, here it is. Let's do a little bit of a walk around and I'll talk you through some of the issues that this car has, why I bought it, and what I ultimately plan on doing with it. So this is as I bought it. I have not touched anything. So please don't judge me off of the novelty stickers that are placed on the doors and on the hatch. I actually bought this car from a good buddy of mine who daily drove this thing for like two years um, on like a hundred mile commute every year, probably not a hundred, it's like a 50 mile commute every day that he drove, getting like 12 MPG, absolute warrior for that. But anyways, uh, he owns also an E36, so that would explain this sticker. I filmed this car for the Topher channel. I put a little piece of tape over here that had a four on it that made it so it was accurate for me. But anyways, um, here's the car. I mean, the biggest dent or ding or whatever you want to call it is right here from where the previous, previous owner was towing a boat with this thing and the trailer came detached, came up and hit the hatch. So this is the biggest piece of damage on the car. Um, so if you're selling a hatch for a silver Mercedes ML, hit me up. I am in the market for one. Um, speaking of towing, this does have a hitch on it and uh, it's rated for about 5,000 pounds. So really not a SUV meant for things like that, but of course being a V8 SUV, uh, you would expect it to have some sort of towing capabilities and it certainly does. Um, but let's talk about what this car was meant for. So back in the early 2000s, there weren't many SUVs like this. There was no X5M yet. There were no hot Audi SUVs. There wasn't even a Porsche Cayenne. So this was really one of the super early adopters of the fast SUV segment. In fact, it may have even been the first one. So AMG breathed upon this ML55 and um, well, under the hood, it's got a 5.4 liter naturally aspirated V8, 342 horsepower, and that is sent to all four wheels. So it's certainly no slouch. Zero to 60 happens in about six and a half seconds. So if you think about, shoot, 22 years ago, it's really not all that bad. The interior hasn't aged super poorly either. In fact, this one is quite clean. Uh, the seats themselves are kind of, you know, cracked and whatnot, but they're not ripped anywhere. It seems like Mercedes leather, or pleather, whatever fake sort of thing they use, uh, always seems to hold up really well. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know, I mean, this could be real leather in the ML, I'm not 100% sure, but whatever it is, it has held up really well. And honestly, this whole interior has really nice wood steering wheel, and we even have a unique cluster in this ML55, white face cluster that says AMG. Man, I would have paid a thousand dollars just for this cluster. It's absolutely beautiful. Early 2000s navigation in here with a cassette player behind it. This whole unit pops out and that's what this aux cord is for. Obviously automatic, it has a five speed transmission as most uh, Mercedes AMG products did back in the day. Everything sort of creaks in here and makes all sorts of gnarly noises and such, but that just reminds you that you're in a Mercedes uh, SUV from the early 2000s. It's got these cup holders that pop out of the dash. Um, sometimes they go back in, as that one just did. Glove box there. But overall, not too bad of an interior. Let's look under the hood. Where you won't suspect where the latch release is. It's actually in the Mercedes badge. You pull this little lever and it pops up. So there it is, the 5.4 liter V8. 
pretty tidy engine bay, pretty attractive engine cover. I like that you can still see the intake manifold right there. Um, I just put a fresh battery in the car. I suppose that's really the only thing I've done. I washed it and I put a fresh battery in it because it had some like Walmart tractor battery, <laughs> not actually tractor. It was like half the size of this one, totally the wrong battery for this car, which um, I thought maybe would fix some of the issues with it, but at least it fixed the issue of it not starting at all. So the, the new battery helped that. So I guess we can segue off of that um, into some of the issues that this car has. And I do apologize. Um, I did drink a full thing of coffee before this. I'm getting in a habit of doing that before I film and it just makes me way too hyper. So I apologize if that stresses you out, but uh, just try and bear with me here. So shut the bonnet, that's incredibly loud. Anyways, so what's wrong with my ML55 AMG? Well, it starts, runs, drives, stops, without incident if you're just driving around in a parking lot. But if you try and actually go out on the road with this thing, you'll see that once it's actually under load, it bogs down quite a bit and sometimes will completely stall out and shut off. It's an intermittent issue. It's not really something that happens all the time. You can sometimes get about 50% power out of this thing and you could drive it 40, 50 miles an hour down the road, um, but uh, not always, in fact, I have it parked, I, I park it on the other side of the building over here and it shut off as I was just on my way over here earlier. And we'll go for a short drive here in just a sec so you can see what I'm on about. But uh, it's a real shame because when this car is running right, and I have been in it when it's running right, of course it was owned by my buddy uh, before me, but when it's running right, it is a really, really properly good vintage Mercedes and uh, it's really fun to drive. So I'm hoping to get it back up to where it was I'm thinking maybe it's an issue with a fuel filter or maybe it just needs like an overall tune-up. I'm scared of it being something electrical just because it's inconsistent, but uh, maybe something fuel related is clogged. I don't know, comment down below once we're actually out on the road and I can show you what's going on with this thing. Comment down below if you have any suspicions what is going on with it. And we read it with our uh, fixed, our little fixed OBD reader on the Topher channel. I'll link that video down below. Um, also, our discount code, if you want to buy a fixed reader, you can get one for 20 bucks. We pulled some codes that had a bunch of misfires, so I don't know, guys. I'm kind of just starting from square one here, just kind of going to go down the list with uh, our in-house mechanic here, Keone, um, and see if we can actually figure this thing out. So without further ado, why don't we uh, take this thing for a short drive, really kind of just around the parking lot. I don't want to break it even more. I don't like driving cars while they're broken, but I do want to show you guys what's going on with it. So let's go for a drive. Here is our key for the ML55. It, uh, it should have a loop here where you can put it on a keychain, but it doesn't. So it's just a standalone switchblade key, typical early 2000s German car style. Oh, also, these are coming off. These hideous chrome covers on the door handles, those have got to go. They're sharp. They've got really nasty edges on them. They've got to go. All right, anyways. So... Let's go ahead and start this thing up. You can see our slew of lights here. And it fires right up every time. So a couple of warning lights that aren't related to what's going on, at least I don't think they are, because a sensor is removed for the yaw sensor or something. Uh, BAS, ESP, ETS, and ABS lights, those are all related to the sensor that's pulled. The check engine light could be a couple of things. So this car has gutted cats, um, unless you're the EPA listening, it doesn't at all. But uh, that could be the reason for the check engine light or the slew of misfire codes that we got uh, when I was filming this for the Topher. And it really baffles me because it's idling fine right now. I mean, listen to how smooth this is idling. It's unbelievable. So um, let's take it around the block real quick and see if I can show you guys what this thing is doing. Try not to run over any of the CrossFit people that are running by. Okay, solid. All right, so under load, this thing just falls on its face. I'm like halfway down on the gas right now. You see that? It's just, you put your foot down and it just misses. I mean, it runs on like three cylinders. Oh, it's struggling now. Yes. Yeah, so as you can hear there, it really, really struggles. If you really feather the gas, 
you can get this thing up to like I said I don't know 30 40 miles an hour before it dies but it just it has no power sometimes it gets a little bit better as it warms up as you let it run and as you drive it more it'll get slightly better I don't know maybe to like 50% of what it should be but it never gets to a hundred so starting from nothing really here I have no idea what's causing this issue obviously when working on a car you start with well does it have spark does it have fuel does it have air well I guess we're just gonna have to go through and trace our steps and try and find what's going on with this thing but oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's unfortunate I want to hear this 5.4 liter and uh, let you guys hear it as well but it is not in a good way right now so uh, actually let's go ahead and put it back over here or I park it anyways and we'll end our video over on this side and I'll show you guys one of my other cars actually that you'll see on the channel here shortly As you can hear, idling beautifully. A little bit of a miss on rev up, so. I don't know guys, comment down below if you have an idea or maybe a place to start. I do have to read through the comments on the Topher video because I asked them the same thing and I got like a hundred comments of people telling me, but maybe some Topher Drives subscribers will have some ideas as well. All right, well. This is the ML55. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed watching this. My plans with this car are really just to, well, first of all, get it running right, drive it around a little bit, kind of use it as a daily driver when I'm in between press cars. And also, ultimate goal with this thing would be to put some more aggressive tires on it because it desperately needs tires. These are like some ancient, disgusting hand-cooked tires that are super dry rotted. So we'll be getting a set of tires for it regardless, but it would be cool to get a bigger set of tires and take this thing to Holly Oaks or somewhere and test its off-road ness See if we can, uh, I don't know, do some all-wheel drive donuts or something in, in, in the dirt or do some trails, do some off-roading uh, because after all, it is an SUV from the early 2000s when they were actually kind of focused on doing some mild off-roading. So it would be cool to put it to the test there and just see what it's capable of. And otherwise, I don't know, just drive it around for a little bit and then, uh, move on to the next one but i'm really excited because it's an amg and i've always wanted to own an amg car so it's cool to finally own one and uh add it to the stable so while we're over here <laughs> i want to show you this car so this is my uh e46 323i if you're still watching at this point you you're definitely uh, a subscriber so thank you for subscribing and hello um this will be the car that you see next this car has been featured on the topher channel um, it's a 2000 BMW 323i E46 manual, and it's done 364,000 miles. So it's like the highest mileage E46 that I've ever seen. I'm excited to show you guys this car, go for a drive. I kind of want to treat this one like Matt Farah treated his million mile Lexus, where he was just like loaning it out to people to drive it. Because this thing runs and drives great, so it would be cool to just kind of keep racking up the miles and see if we can get it to 400,000 without incident. Um, so that'll be next on the list. You guys will be seeing a full video devoted to this car very soon. And if you can't wait, if you want to see it right now, I have filmed two videos on this car for the Topher channel. So I'll link those down below as well um, if you want to check those out. Uh, otherwise, that'll pretty much do it for us today. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and watching. I feel like I'm forgetting things to say about this car. Um, other than the fact that I'm just really excited to hopefully have it and drive it one day. Oh, these headlights. Hideous. I want to get rid of them. I don't know if they're OEM or not. They've been messed with slightly because uh, this is obviously not OEM, this like little running light in here. So uh, I just want to ditch the headlights altogether because I hate them. I think they're hateful. They spoil the look of the car in the front. So um, additionally, if you don't have a clean silver hatch, but you do have a set of OEM headlights that are in good shape, uh, hit me up, comment down below, DM me on Instagram, and uh, let me know if you have that. That fog light is full of water and dirt. Is this one as well? That one's not, I don't think. 
Oh man, what a joy these uh, early, two, early 2000s German cars are. All right, guys. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Um, more videos coming soon on all the cars and whatever else. But uh, I've had this thing for a couple months now, so I've been meaning to get a video out. And I'm happy that I finally found some time to film it. So we'll see you soon in the next video. But as for now, this has been the ML55. And uh, stay tuned for more content on this. The 420 SEL the E46, and I don't know, whatever else I decide to go and buy. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching. Take care, and we'll see you soon in the next video.